get a huge loan, like a business loan, or I mean, you know, you got to secure the capital somehow. But uh, as far as you know, like resources, um, you know, there's 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 different uh, veteran agencies in your area. Right. Um, there's like there's the military one source. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's veterans too, but I know for a fact, active duty military, if you want to build a business, um, you call the military one source hotline and they get you in touch with a whole bunch of people, uh, different colleges. Like I went like here in North Carolina, I went to speak at, uh, at wake tech in wake forest, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. and they have a veterans, uh, uh, veterans department, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll speak in there because they're they're teaching the veterans how to build businesses and they're going back to school to learn uh, engineering, you know, whatever. And so there's different colleges that actually have like a veterans uh, area, a veterans department, mm-hmm. and they can help you secure whatever it is that you need to secure. Uh, you can go back to school and, you know, so, you know, as far as resources, um, you know, that, that's the only ones that I know about. Yeah, here uh, here in the area that I'm in, in North Texas, uh, there's the Veterans Business Outreach Center that's especially yeah. through UTA that, that I've talked to the guys out there. So that might be the yeah. same same group that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They, they help you secure the loans. They help you secure like business. You can get um, uh, business models written up for you. You know, business plans are all like ready to go, sure. you know, so they just help the veterans like build businesses, mm-hmm. you know. And so, yeah, I went and spoke out there last year about, you know, the three businesses that I built and how I did them and, and, and what I used and stuff like that. So, well, you know, t- today uh, we're, we're kind of in a, uh, an interesting environment because uh, we, we've seen a lot of things, especially on, on, on news media and so forth, where, where people are starting to take stands on based on their values. And you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, now people are, are just kind of putting that story out there that they, they take a stand for something that they believe and, yeah. How, how do you incorporate in, that into your business? Oh yeah, man. Core values are huge. Oh yeah. I have like personal core values and mm-hmm. then I have my business core values and, and you know, a lot of times they're the same, but uh, yeah, everything I do is based on, is based on values and, and the goals that I have, mm-hmm. the goals that I have are, are values based goals, you know? So if I say that one of my values is relationships, right? Right. And I'm like, okay, well, what kind of relationships? If I say father, husband, you know, then I'm setting a goal to be that better father, better husband. You know, if I have a goal of like, one of my core values is honesty and loyalty. So one of my goals is to be 100% truthful and honest to every single person I meet. And usually I'm like brutally honest, <laughs> yeah. which, which is, I don't know, <laughs> could be bad or good. But usually I have these values and then I craft a goal around the value, you know? So if you value sure. your health, then, mm-hmm. you know, what is it that, that you, that you value about it? You know, right. if it's longevity, then okay, write a goal, you know, um, I value health, I value longevity. So cool. I'm going to go to the gym for 30 minutes, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to eat right. And, you know, whatever. So you just set these different goals based on your values. And if these are the values that you have normally, when you write goals, it's hit or miss. If you're going to hit it, and I really believe this, but I found that when you have a value attached to the goal, because values are where you want to be in life and goals are just the accomplishments along the way. Right, so when right. that happens, you're, you're a lot more successful than you would just be oh, always going to write this goal down and try to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, is there something that you wish you had done earlier in life that, that maybe you didn't do that you now know is uh, vitally important? Oh man, that's, that's tough, man. Cause I believe that everything happens for a reason and, and every man, I mean, I don't know, man, that's a hard question. I, I don't, I don't live with regret. I don't wish I would have done this, that, or, I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't really look, I don't, I don't really look at the past that much. You know what I mean? I'm always leaning yeah. forward into the future. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, mine's kind of the obvious one is, you know, wishing that I had started doing things earlier, you know, wish I had planned sooner, yeah. that kind of thing. But, you know, sure. I, I'm kind of like you that I, I try to not live life looking in the rear view mirror. You know, I, I try to right. keep, keep eyes forward. But, you know, I do have that one common one that, you know, well, I wish I had done yeah. things a little bit sooner, you know, instead of just yeah, wait, yeah. waiting, you know, later on. Right, but, yeah. So I'd like to focus kind of on, on you um, as a person, Sean, uh, for a few minutes, sure. if that's okay with you. 
Yeah. Uh, what hurdles did you have to personally face uh, when you were transitioning out uh, of your, your active duty military service uh, and then into entrepreneurship and how did you overcome that? Well, I'm transitioning. Uh, I'm transitioning now. I've got a right, little bit right. left to go, mm-hmm. you know, but uh Jeez, man, you know, we're going to live <laughs> like, mm-hmm. do I just, like some people just retire back home, wherever they're from. Sure. Uh, some people retire where they're currently living and they just kind of transition out because they like the area. Mm-hmm. Um, we've decided that we're going to move back to San Antonio. So oh. uh, I was there as awesome. a drill instructor for the air force mm-hmm. and um, we have a great network there. And um, we, we still are friends with uh, some neighbors that were, that, that are there and, mm-hmm. uh, Texas has a great, uh, in San Antonio anyways, I don't know about uh, where you're at, but um, they have a great VA. Yeah. You know, I've, I've really never heard any complaints from, from anybody who goes, oh my God, this VA is terrible. Like here in North Carolina, that's all I hear. Mm-hmm. Is people like hate the VA. They, they yeah. don't want to go. Um, but I, you know, and people that I've talked to that have retired in San Antonio, they, they love it. They're like, yeah, it's fine. It's great, you know. Um, and I figured that if, uh, if anything bad happens and Texas wants to succeed from the union, you know, I, I'm in a great place. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah uh, we always, know. Talk, we always talk about it here in Texas that right? you know, we're, we're trying to succeed whether things, you know, whether it hits the fan or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's just, we're, we're going to move to San Antonio. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was, I was actually stationed down there at, uh, Fort Sam Houston back when I was, oh, cool. San, so it was it was a fun place. Uh, so was it? Yeah, you know, were those steps uh, that you're talking about? Were those kind of obvious, or you sort of stumble upon the answers that you know what? How you overcame those things? Yeah, you know, we we just sat and talked. It was like, hey, we need to figure this out. Like, I'm gonna be done soon. <laughs> like, we need to yeah. figure out where, where we're going. And at first, we're like, well, let's just stay here for a little bit until we figure it out. And I was like, mm-hmm. eh, I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't really like that. I mean, we like the it's not like we love the area that we're in, but I've been here for five years, you know, I mean, we, you make friends and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you find a church that you love and, and the community that supports you is great. So it's like, man. And then people, of course people here like, no, don't leave. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> man. So we, we talked about it like quite extensively, you know, uh, whenever we could like, Hey, what are we doing? Like we need to figure this out. You know, and all right, well, where don't we want to go? <laughs> we just started like, where don't we want to go? You know, I was like, man, I'd love to go to Florida because it's, you know, she, you know, my wife's got family down there and mm-hmm. it's a great place. Um, we, we know that we don't want to live like where our parents are. So yeah. we're not going to live in Michigan and we're not going to live in Utah. Um, I said, I don't want to live anywhere where there's snow. She wants to live in like Colorado. I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So we just were like, well, where would be a place that we both want to live that we've already been to maybe, you know? So I, it was just like a, like a process of elimination really. Yeah. Um, but uh, we just absolutely loved living in San Antonio besides like the heat sucks, but, yeah. uh, but we just loved living in San Antonio. You know what I mean? Got a million people in the city. So it's not like some little weird farming town. <laughs> so. Yeah. And the river walks a blast. Yeah. Oh yeah, the river walks awesome. Sea World's there. Six Flags. Like, I mean, there's so much to do. So much to do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So when you were starting your businesses, uh, what what compelled you to to start those? And kind of tell me about that. Yeah. So the first one was an entertainment company. I started off DJing, and I loved music. You know, we did like parties and bars and clubs, and and I was like, man, this is so great, man. I want to I want to branch out. Like, I want to be bigger. Mm-hmm. You know. So I ended up taking on two more. Uh, two more DJs and we ended up partnering and just making, making a company. And then, you know, we were like going to these shows. They have like these DJ shows, like these, um, you know, just like a business expo, you know, mm-hmm. show, show what you can do and, and everything. And this is back in like 2005, 2006. And then uh, pretty soon after I started, I started getting into, well, let's do weddings and, and uh, quinceaneras and high school graduations and, you know, college, um, uh, parties or whatever the, the college, um, you know, events, you know, put on by the college. Uh, and then, Hey, let's do sound for conferences. And then I added a videographer and a photographer. And so we had all the videos and stuff made and, and, you know, it just started growing, you know, but it started from a passion. You know, (laughs) I loved DJing. I loved hanging out, playing music and, and all that. So, 
just started from a passion. My second one was uh, a friend of mine took me to a storage unit. He's like, I just bought this. I'm like, how do you buy that? And then like right around the same time, like Storage Wars came out and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, it was a thrill of the hunt. That's what it was. It was just a thrill of the hunt. And so by the time that uh, 2013 came around, we started in 2010. By the time 2013 came around, my wife and I had a pretty decent size uh, antique store. We had um, clients in Houston, Laredo, uh, Amarillo, Dallas, Fort Worth, everywhere. We had clients everywhere that looked for only these certain collectible things, and then I'd ship it to them. Wow. And so that was that. And then the third one is, uh, you know, I, I love speaking on stage. I love uh, teaching people, you know, how to live a better life and, and business strategies and all this other different stuff. And and uh, it, again, something became passion, you know, became yeah. profit. Yeah, and, and that's that, I think that's kind of how it should be. Is you know, when you, when you love, like the saying goes, when you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I <clears throat> no, absolutely. I, do, I do love that philosophy. Uh, is there a profession other than than what you are currently doing or have done that you'd like to attempt? I don't think so. <laughs> I haven't come okay. across it yet. You know, when I was five years old, I wanted to be a farmer. Like, I really wanted to be a farmer. And then I wow. talked myself out of it because when I grew up, you know, I found out that like combines are like $250,000. I'm like, how the, how am I going to become a farmer? Like an agricultural yeah. expert, you yeah. know, my stuff gets sold at Walmart, you know, how the heck am I going to do that when the equipment is so expensive, you know, <laughs> but so yeah, I never did it, but I've had like different gardens and, and you know, I grew different things or whatever, but as a hobby, but that'd be it, man. That's it. Oh, cool. So uh, what would you say your greatest strength is? Oh, dude, visionary. Dude, I'm a visionary, man. I, like every decision I make has, has long-lasting implications. Mm -hmm. I don't just make a decision because it's, it's for the now. Every decision I make is for me to, to extend the longevity of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if, if somebody says, well, I have an issue with this, or I don't know how to do this, or what do I do here? You know, I, I try to have the answer um, yeah. based on, you know, what, what implications will it have, you know, in the future? Yeah. I, I'm definitely really good at forecasting or, or having a vision. Mm -hmm. oh, and you answered that pretty quick. Um, so what's your greatest weakness? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, how much time do we have? Uh, I would say, man, there's, there's like four or five. And then I can probably think of like a list of things, but I would say that I consume too much like mm -hmm. information, you know, like I have to, like I have to watch the next. Now I'm really good at, at, at taking action. Like I try to stick to the 80, 20 rule, like take 80% action on every 20% of mm -hmm. information you gain. Um, but man, I just, I love consuming content. I love learning. I love knowledge. You know, and so I get stuck sometimes reading one article after another, after another, after another, after another. And then sometimes I forget what the heck I read. You know, I'm like, oh, what was that one thing? I got to go back now. I got to go find it, you know. And so I, I'm really like writing things down like all the time. I write stuff down every time I learn something. Oh, cool, cool. So, yeah, a lot of people have a, a certain place that they go to to get their best ideas. You know, whether, you know, whether that's the latrine or, you know, out in the field, out in the field or something. Where's your place? Everywhere. Everywhere? Another place. Everywhere. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, if you can describe at a high level uh, what the process is behind what you do uh, with your different businesses, how would you describe that? Um, it's different for each one. I think that, you know, if, if – because I want to I wanna be the best at what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to be the best speaker. And that's not what I want to do. Like, I want to be the best at what I do. Okay. You know, and, and I definitely, I, I don't think that anybody's my competition. Podcaster, speaker, business owner, like nobody's my competition. Yeah. Like I'm my own competition, you know? So, so to operate at a high level, I mean, is it six figures? Is it seven figures? Is it, I mean, some people tell you, oh yeah, once you reach six figures, you're reaching a, you're reaching a high level. Well, how come, how come, you know, the, this certain level isn't like, is it a high six figures? Is it only seven figures? So, so, you know, it's hard for me to answer that question because my high level, what I would operate at a high level is, is all the expenses are paid, right? You're turning profit. Right. I mean, that's, that's 
I mean, I'm not saying profit of like a hundred bucks, like, you know, thousands of dollars.